Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I got something really exciting in the mail and this is going to be a game changer for the canning that has been happening here. I have been doing more canning this year than I have ever done any year um, that I've done canning. And I have had something I have been eyeballing for quite some time now and this is going to allow me to do a lot more at once so I can get more done and fill more jars, get them in the pantry and all of that. And uh, here it is. Oh, so excited. I got the All American Canner. This is the model 930, which means it is big enough that I can double stack quart jars in the canner. Um, that's exciting because I have the Presto pressure canner that I've had for a few years now and it's great I can do a lot in there but when it comes to the jars I can only single stack quart jars and I can double stack well I can double stack pint jars and I can triple stack like the, the shorter jars but I'm doing a lot of quarts a lot of bigger jars and with this 930 I can double stack quarts, so I'll be able to get a lot more done all at once. Uh, the All American Canner website is back ordered. They've been back ordered for quite a while. Um, however, <clears throat> I'm in a canning group and somebody commented that she had just ordered a canner through Amazon. And Amazon, I mean, every place has been out of these. I, I've been watching like everywhere and couldn't find them. As soon as I saw her post, I immediately jumped on Amazon. They had three in stock and I ordered one immediately. So I wasn't supposed to be able to get one until December. Um, I had put in an order through the um, All American Kenner website, um, but I'm able to cancel that order and I got it. So Mr. Smith is like, well, hurry up and open it. <laughs> By the way, the All American Canner, made in Wisconsin. Just a little tidbit about that. Now the Presto pressure canner that I've used for some time has uh, just the gauge, whereas the All-American canner has both the gauge and the weight. So you've got kind of double duty or, or, or like a backup, so it gives you a really precise reading as far as um, where everything's going. And to open it and close it, you have these um, kind of like giant wing nuts that you turn and unlock. And this is a heavy duty canner. Got the user manual. And in here is the pressure regulator weight. So this has the different settings depending upon what weight you're needing to can things at. You've got 5 pound, 10 pound, and 15 pound. And then we've got uh, 
two racks, one for the bottom level and an extra one so that you can double stack right out of the box. That's fantastic. My Presto canner back when I ordered it, um, it only came with one rack so you had to purchase a second one uh, separately but this already comes with two so you're ready to can right out of the box. So I'm excited and this will be getting put to use very soon. Hey guys, so I just got done running a couple of errands. I'm getting ready to do a little bit of canning. I'm going to um, preserve some pork. I have a great big pork loin that I have thawed out. I'm trying to work on reducing how much meat I have in my freezer. We have a great big freezer that is in my office area and it is slam packed full of things and it includes a lot of meat. And so I would really like to not have all of our meat in that freezer. I want to have it spread out. I want to have some of that canned so that if there was ever some sort of situation where we lost power, I mean, we just had all of these storms roll through here and, and thankfully we did not lose power, but there are people in our area who did. And so if I could take some of that meat, can it up, have it stable so it's, it's not reliant upon electricity and, and, and relying on that freezer working, that just would make me feel a little bit better. And plus, it gives me more space in my freezer. It, it, like I said, it is full, full, full. But I did also want to mention the All-American Canner. I'm so excited to have gotten one of those. Now, while I do have this fantastic canner that I'm excited to have, um, it is not one that I'm going to use all the time. If I'm doing a smaller batch, like the pork that I'm getting ready to do, um, I'm still going to use my Presto canner. There, there's really no point in using the Great Big All-American because it's a 930. It's one that you can double stack quarts in. I don't need to use that size of a canner if I'm just doing a small batch. So my Presto is still going to be getting lots and lots of use as will my steam canner and all of that. The only canner that I don't use that much anymore is my hot water bath canner simply because I have the steam canner and I love it. Um, now if I'm doing a big batch of um, jelly and I want to double stack, I could do that in my hot water bath canner or I can use my Presto canner because it is tall enough that I can um, double stack the jars in there. And you can double stack in a hot water bath canner as long as you've got a couple of inches over the top of your top jars. And a pressure canner can be used as a hot water bath canner. You just wouldn't seal it, you would just put the lid on top. So my old granny wear uh, hot water bath canner is not getting used a lot anymore, but I've still got it just in case I need it. And currently it, it's being used as a storage container to hold all of my canning tools. But before I end this video and get to work, I wanna share with you what I got today. So I went on a little bit of a drive. Well, I ran a couple of errands. One of my errands was to Tractor Supply. And then after Tractor Supply, I headed on out into the country. And here in Northern Alabama, in an area called Falkville, and it's not actually in Falkville, but it's the address is Falkville. We have this country store called the Dutch Oven Bakery. And I've mentioned it before in some of my videos. They have a deli, they've got a bakery, of course. Um, they've got a little country store. So they have all sorts of things there to include a section of bulk foods. So with all of the canning that I'm doing, I'm going through quite a bit of my spices and there's certain ones that I'm using a lot of. So I went ahead and I stocked up on a few of those, some cinnamon, some ground nutmeg, some granulated onion. Now, generally when I'm cooking, I really like to use fresh nutmeg and I'll, I'll grate it on the little microplane. But sometimes there's a recipe that uses a lot of it um, or you need precise measurements. And honestly, when I'm using that microplane with the whole nutmeg, I just kind of eyeball it. But I do still like to have ground nutmeg on hand uh, for recipes. 
I also picked up some cinnamon sticks because um, using those a lot nowadays it's just that time of year and then I stocked up on a few things that I really wanted to have in my pantry uh, I'm doing more baking again those of you who've been around for a while know that I went paleo a couple years ago which meant no breads, no pasta, stuff like that. Now, not too long ago, I did start incorporating a homemade bread back into my eating, but that is with the freshly milled wheat that I do myself, and my health has been great. I'm not having joint problems or anything like that. Now, that said, while I choose to eat that way, Mr. Smith doesn't necessarily, and so I do still like to make things for him that he really, really likes. And there is a particular homemade bread that I make that he absolutely loves. Well, there's a couple of them. But he's been asking about some of these. And so I'm like, well, if I'm gonna make those, I need some more bread flour. And so, oh, I picked up some bread flour at the Dutch Oven Bakery. This is the bread flour that they use there. And this is a 10 pound bag of flour and it cost me just over six dollars for this now like i said i mill my own wheat when i do my homemade bread but i do use a little bit of traditional bread flour when it comes to like forming the loaves or adding a little bit extra if i need a little more flour as the dough is being worked so i do still like to have uh, bread flour on hand i also picked up some powdered milk because I use powdered milk in some of the breads that I make um, and honestly I like to have powdered milk on hand again you never know when you're gonna need it if you find yourself in a situation where you can't find milk uh, we all know back in the springtime there were a lot of staples that we couldn't get very readily and so having powdered milk in the pantry is always um, a wise idea in my opinion I picked up some potato flakes for the same reason. You can use potato flakes for all sorts of things. Thickening up soups, I use them in some breads, and so I picked up some of those. And then there were two things in particular that I was looking for. One of them was clear gel. Clear gel is a type of cornstarch that is designed to hold up to being canned. I have several soups that I want to um, make and can, and they use clear gel. Now you can use regular cornstarch, but if you do, it's not gonna hold up. Um, it's not going to stay thick, and it's just going to be runny when it comes out of the jar. And so you really need to use clear gel or just simply omit it and then just thicken it up when you take it out of the jar and heat it up in the pan. Just add a little thickener at that time. The other thing that I was looking for was this. Pectin has been really hard to find. It goes right along with the canners, with the jars, and all of the food preservation uh, things that normally would be on sale this time of year because garden season is pretty much over and this is when you would be stocking up on that stuff but you can't find it i mean it's it's just sold out everywhere because there's a lot more people canning than there used to be which is a good thing but makes it a little bit of a struggle for those of us who do it all the time anyways but i was looking for pectin and i was in luck they had packages of pectin there now this is your original pectin uh, not your low sugar kind this is your classic pectin and when I picked this up and put it in my cart there was a lady standing there and she saw me do that and she asked me uh, if I use this because she was looking at it but she doesn't know how to use it and so I explained to her well let me get a prop here So I explained to her that when you buy the bulk, you would just measure out the quantity that you need for your recipe. If you are doing a recipe and it calls for a pouch or a packet of your powdered pectin, this is 1.75 ounces. And when you measure it out, this is four tablespoons of powdered pectin. So if you were doing a recipe where you 
would have used one of these and you've got this, you would just use four tablespoons of your bulk pectin. Whether you get it at a bulk store like this or you get those jars of loose pectin, it's four tablespoons to replace one of these boxed pouches. Now speaking of replacing pectin, I do have an article that I just published on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, that explains how you can substitute powdered pectin for liquid pectin in your recipes if you can only find the powdered and your recipe calls for liquid. I explained how you can do that and by following those rules, because there's, there's things that you have to do, you can't just swap a pouch for a pouch, um, you can also substitute liquid for the pectin um, by following the rules of how you use it. So I will link that article down below. And then I picked up two handy dandy tools at the Dutch Oven Bakery. One is a scoop for my wheat. Um, I've been wanting to have a little scoop that I just could keep in the bucket and have handy. And they had these in all different sizes. Um, this is actually one of the smaller ones that they had. They had some mighty big ones in there. And then the other thing I got, which I thought this would be super handy when I am canning. You know, sometimes when you're canning, you have solids that you want to have evenly distributed among your jars, and then you want to go back and add the liquid later. And that can be a little bit of a challenge. I thought this would make it much easier. So it is a ladle but it has a colander basically built on the side. So I can scoop out how much I need, drain out the excess liquid, put my solids in my jar, and I can just go back and get the amount of liquid that I need. So I thought this would be perfect for making my life easier when it comes to canning. So now all of these things I will take out of the, the pouches, the bags that they came in, and I will store them in um, mason jars and things like that. I store just about everything in canning jars. Now the big things like, oh, the flour, those will go in food safe buckets. Um, I've got like those gamma seal lids for some of them, um, but anything that's big and bulky like this, I store in the food safe uh, buckets. And I've noticed that a lot of the hardware stores have started carrying food safe BPA free buckets now. Um, in the past those used to be a real challenge to be able to find but they're they're pretty readily available nowadays which makes it really easy um, if you're needing them and you got stuff you need to store. I do actually have a video where I talked about how I store all of my foods and things like that and I will put a link to that down below. Oh and you can see my cabinets back here that I've been working on. I was actually painting them last night. So as you can see, the doors are kind of propped open. I don't want them all the way closed and until that paint is completely dry and cured so that they don't stick. Um, but these are coming along and I just ordered the handles. So I will be very excited to have that project finished um, before I move on to the next one. So thanks for hanging out here in the Homestead Kitchen with me. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. I'll talk to y'all next time.